Hey guys, it's Vimitrius Warhammer Tactics Series, and today we'll discuss the Emperor's 10,000, the Golden Legion, the best bodyguards on Terra, the Adaptus Custodius. And if you ever had a problem with finding the right combination for your list, or you're struggling to make them work, this video guide is for you. Or perhaps if you want to learn more about how to deal with the Adeptus Custodius. I actually have a special video just about that, but I would recommend to watch them both to have the most comprehensive understanding. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So by tradition, let's discuss the strength first. And obviously the Adeptus Custodius are the most elite non-vehicle faction. For TK, obviously I'm making the non-vehicle exception because there are knights and you have like seven models on the table but those are huge towering war machines if we're talking about a regular typical army of 40k these guys are the most elite so you have the least amount of models on the table and obviously it means that they must be the cream de la crop basically they have all the characteristics dialed up to the maximum what some armies might get on the on some of their units like for example space marines you can get your terminators with uh well they have two up safe and they can get out four up in the vulnerable save and if you use some things you can get them to hit on twos in combat but custodians will get that across the board they'll get two up save they'll get two up ballistic skill and weapon skill all the time and also they are t5 so they are very hard to wound and actually it makes a lot of difference that the jump between toughness 4 and toughness 5 is one of the most substantial jumps in the wounding hierarchy in 40k in my humble opinion it's probably even more important than the jump from t7 to t8 but that's subjective so in any case you get damage 2 on melee on their weapons even their bolters are damage 2 which is quite rare in 40k in old imperium and imperium like armies and they also get a four up and vulnerable save army wide uh, except on vehicles so i mean troops all your infantry everyone has four up and one they also are a universal force so it's not like they are specialized in melee only they are awesome in shooting as well obviously depending on how you build your list you can have only infantry in there and that's probably that will not be very shooty unless you are going for some very specific forge world stuff but if you are building a balanced list which is what we are going to be doing today you will be very much potent in the shooting phase especially if you use their martial cut as well and martial cutters are basically your version of necron protocols but better because you get more flexibility with them and uh, it's, it's like your army-wide rule that you can enact turn on at one point of the game or another and you must switch them uh, and um, change them during the game and they are some of them are very very strong for example like no rerolls in combat no rerolls to hit in combat against you that's very strong or minus two to pile-ins and consolidations if uh, an enemy unit is within engagement range of you so again very strong something that you don't get a lot of in 40k and that is like an add-on rule so you have a lot of other stuff that's going on for custodians and that's just there to help them out more they are reliable so if you play your cards right uh, you will be often hitting in melee on two plus with rerolls not just on two plus and wounding on two plus with rerolls there are several ways to get to that level uh, in this book it's not like they always wound on two plus but you can relatively easily get there in some cases and you get quite a lot of damage to attacks on the target and sometimes damage too obviously can be very anticlimactic especially if you're targeting is something that you shouldn't be targeting with damage to like dreadnoughts but if you get damage to on the right target it can actually be extremely devastating because it's actually two times better than damage one that's quite obvious but sometimes in ninth edition when everything got reduced damage or a lot of things get the reduced damage we often don't treat damage to as uh, it was treated uh, for example in eighth edition we might forget that it's a very strong rule actually so getting that on basic troops is very good as an army where your base infantry are toughness five two plus save four plus and one three wounds each and there's also a possibility of extra layers of defense from your stratagems they are quite resilient but what i really love about them is that they are not unkillable like some death star units that are out there for example the 
uh, the newest one is probably the Terminator blob in the Chaos Space Marine book where you can actually get them to like toughness 5, minus 1 to wound, 5 up shrug. Uh, you can only hit them on 4 plus or better. You get no rerolls against them and so on and so forth. And you, they get like 1 up save in cover it's 2 up. So uh, that level of invincibility is not really present anymore in the Adeptus Custodius Codex unless you get all your stars right in the right place. So that's what I like about them. I don't think they are too overpowered at this moment and their level of defense is probably on the level where it is supposed to be. So they also get some help from their Vexil Praetors, which are basically their support characters, banners as uh, some people like to call them. And they are 6 inch ores of dense cover, light cover, all plus one attack for core character units. Obviously plus one attack is very strong, but uh, when you need to pay extra 100 something points for a character to get that, you probably might as well just buy yourself a new squad of custodies at this point. Obviously, a new squad costs slightly more than that, but you get more attacks. And uh, I think that is a um, wiser choice. But when it comes to defense, that's where you are probably better off buying the Vexel Spreader because he will be buffing and making your units that you already have in your army less, much, much less easy to kill. Their characters are obviously wonderful, as the Custodes are supposed to represent the elite of the elite, the Emperor's vision of a perfect warrior, unlike the Astartes, which are a cheap version of a perfect warrior. <laughs> so the, these guys are where there are no cutbacks, so they are the best that the Emperor could probably manage after Primarchs, and we know uh, that he wasn't doing that, probably wasn't doing that all by himself. So these guys are uh, very much the best that he could manage at the time. And it shows in their profile. So their characters are obviously that good. They are much more capable than, for example, Astartes characters. Uh, and especially if you give them the right relics and traits as usual. Stratagems are also great as you, we will see in the synergy section and can help you in multiple situations. And also custodies count as two models for holding objectives which helps with their low body count. And they count as two models for lookout sir. Again very helpful when you only need two custodies to protect your one character with lookout sir. Now about their weaknesses and they do have some of those. Almost no presence in the psychic phase unless you invest heavily in Sisters of Silence, uh, which is not a bad idea because they will give you some psychic protection because Sisters of Silence, they have two things going on for them. Uh, they are minus one to cast within 18 inches of them, which is not perfect because 18 inches is actually not that much. Uh, this is slightly countered by the fact that they have seven inch moves, so you're supposed to like advance them in the front ranks, which is, it's, it sounds very strange to me at least. I don't know how it's for you for this fragile compared to Kasturi's female warriors running front uh, and center to help these guys out, basically being just meat for the grinder. Uh, and that's, that doesn't sound right to me. The, it would probably be more correct, I think, for them to act as a psychic protection where they are near a custody squad. So, for example, if you have like a sister squad in, within three inches of a custody squad, that custody squad gets like five up shrug against mortal wounds instead of a six up shrug against mortal wounds that they always have. And uh, something like... My, it's minus one to cast for powers that are targeting that unit or something like that. It will be hard to do because mostly you select the target for a psychic test for a psychic power after you've already passed the psychic test. But anyways, you get the point. The way that they work now doesn't feel right to me because of the short distance. You are forced to send them out, which is not that fluffy. At least I feel like that. Plus the sisters give you access to the 4-up deny strat within 18 inches of them. Again, don't understand why you get 4-up deny within 18 when regular sisters of battle get, get a 4-up deny within 24 and you are like anti-psychic sisters and they are just regular sisters. How does it work? 
I don't understand. In the previous edition, it w at least it was 18 inches and a 3 plus to deny. Now it's 18 inches, but 4 plus. So they made it worse and worse than the regular sisters. I think it was a, just a mistake and they probably should correct that in the future updates. I hope so. They are painfully elite. So every custodian that you lose will be a serious blow. So it's not like a space marine where you lose one guy from a squad and it's almost the same squad. Here, if you lose one guy out of a unit of three, you are 33% less potent with a squad. And that really hurts. However, inversely, each custodian is a force to be reckoned with. So if your opponent sees that there is one custodian in their alliance, it means that their character might be dead in the next turn or like their tank can suffer a lot of damage from just a couple of those attacks because they will hit probably. They have a very good chance of wounding with, for example, strength 7 on the spear. And it's AB3 and it's damage 2. And there's also like a Misericordian. There's also a couple of shots from the spear. So a lot of damage can come from even one guy. Not enough damage 3 or more weapons. As I already said in, in the army composition, there are so many things in nowadays that have reduced damage ability. Dreadnoughts, Paragon War Suits, you name it. Like the whole Death Guard army. And unless you run a lot of Dreadnoughts, which is a good build in my opinion, you know I love Dreadnoughts, so uh, <laughs> that's not a problem for me. That's just maybe a problem for those of you who like to run infantry heavy armies. Your melee will be heavily punished by the damage reduction. There is no way around that, almost no way around that, unless you're planning to build some very specific character builds. And we'll talk about that later. Speed is something you have to purposefully add to your list because your custodians are your basic six inch move infantry with almost no possibility for advance and charge. So if you really want speed and you want to have at least some speed in ninth edition, you must work around their basic six inch move in your army roster build. After nerfs, their army-wide infantry OPSEC was downgraded to standard troops on the OPSEC, which I find extremely stupid. It's one of those cases where Games Workshop were not really paying attention to the fluff, the lore, other armies around, and uh, they were nerfing just because something needs to be nerfed. And yes, custodians were a bit OP in the at the start of the codex when it just came out, but that part should not have been touched because they are custodies. They are supposed to be protectors. They are supposed to be best of the best. And if Blight Lords, Death Shrouds and Scarbacal Terminators have OPSEC, the Adopt Adaptus Custodies, Wardens and Alaris units should definitely be OPSEC as well. I may agree with the fact that the character should not be OPSEC. Okay, that's uh, understandable, but the Wardens and the Lars should definitely have OPSEC. Well, let's talk about the army composition. Obviously, I will always say this, always try to build a balanced force because that's how you get consistent results in games against various opponents. That's easy to understand. If you lean too hard into melee or into shooting, there, there will be a very distinct, understandable way your opponent can counter your army. So if you don't have enough melee, you can just be charged, tagged and kept there. And if you don't have enough shooting, your distances are very easy to control. I've already talked about that in some of my previous videos and I recommend to check them out if you want to learn more. Let's start with the troops. You must have at least two units of custodian guard for a battalion. And we are only building battalions here because a lot of the variants are, in my opinion, obsolete now, for, for at least for now in Nephilim. So you must have two units of custodian guard and you can have one unit of prosecutors because you cannot have more units or equal units of uh, sisters in the custodian detachment. So uh, two units of custodian guard. The custodian guard should have spears unless you want to have more survivability because spears have more output. They shoot, uh, they have longer range and they are strength seven instead of strength six on the swords and they're cheaper. So they are five points cheaper each and those start to add up if you have a unit of all shields. Uh, so if you really want some extra survivability, which is for shields, it's just plus one save 
so you get one up save on your historian guard uh, you might want like one squad of the shields and one squad of spears moving on to the meat and potatoes i love dreadnoughts especially custodians dreadnoughts as they are innately better than the marine ones i'll give you an example the for some reason the contemptor of the space marines has one less inch of movement which is very important so it's eight inch move instead of nine inches on the custodian barbarian uh, you get six up shrug on the custodian variant which is again very important especially if you suffer like uh three hits of damage four attacks and that will automatically kill your dreadnought your nine wound dreadnought unless you have a shrug which will then translate to you almost definitely will not die from those three shots and that's a very important and you get two plus to hit two plus to hit in melee two plus to hit in shooting and uh, also you get what else two plus save uh, compared to three plus on the contempt from, from marines so so many things r really better in the custodian variant that's why i love the contemptors with custodians so much and i run them with multi melters because they are just simply better than the uh, salt cannon. You can also go with the Forge World stuff. The Achilles and Galatus are both very good. I personally like Galatus more because it, he gives you a 4-up invulnerable save, which is very important for Dreadnoughts, unlike the 5-up and 1 on the Contemptors and, um, or Achilles. And the, uh, you get also minus 1 to hit in melee for him. And also he gives you a very, very big amount of attacks. Uh, he has like, I think he has for base plus d3 or five base plus d3 strength 7 ap3 damage 3 and that's a very very good profile yes he's expensive but he's also very hard to kill so i like a god of small but Achilles is good as well with d3 plus 3 damage on the spear obviously that's not bad and he's also slightly cheaper than Galatus. I don't like Telemann even though Telemann was a staple of 8th edition nowadays he's a bit too expensive he's not that much more survivable than the smaller guys he's also degradable unlike the small guys so I wouldn't run him to be honest and he's not core so you don't get any synergies so don't bother. For support, you definitely need at least one Vexal Spreader, as we well already discussed. I'll probably, again, as I already said, take the Dance Cover because you get the Dance Cover benefit uh, more often. You'll get it because you sometimes see Light Cover on the table. You sometimes can benefit from it. But Dance Cover is less, I think, popular nowadays in terrain setups. And uh, that's how you can get it even in plain sight. And I probably would not recommend spending extra points on the Alaris Vexels because you will just pay that extra five, I think, points or ten for the Alaris suit, which gives you just one extra wound. But you will lose the spear or the axe in your hand. So your character will not be that fighty. You will only be able to fight it with the Misericordia. So it's a five strength five AP two damage one attack instead of strength seven AP three damage two. Two. Alaris Terminators are bad. Uh, they are four wounds each and they are four attacks each, just like Wardens. My problem with them is that even though they're not as expensive as they were in 8th edition, they are just not as punchy as they probably should be as the most elite Terminators in the whole uh, galaxy. And they are just not i don't see any reason to take them over some of the other units you have access to in the codex now that's the problem of the rules building part not the models or the lore it's just the, the guys these guys need an upgrade i think they probably just need damage three on their uh access that's probably what will would have fixed them uh because you can probably increase their price then and that will make them usable because you will get at least some infantry unit that can actually punch into for example a dreadnought and can reliably deal a lot of damage or destroy it unlike what you have now where your infantry are not very good against that wardens are basically your regular custodian guard but they get plus one attack and they get six up shrug and they are slightly more expensive uh, the problem is that now they don't get opsec so why would you run them when you can just run guard and get opsec and have slightly worse characteristics so as soon as they get their opsec back which is i think will happen very soon i think they are very good and uh bringing a couple of squads of those instead of 
a couple of extra squads of custodian guard might be a good way to play we need speed as i already said and dreadnoughts even though they have the nine inch move which is not bad you need something faster than that and the virtue spreaders bikers are perfect uh for the role they are 14 inch move fly they have a great strength 8 AP4 damage d3 plus 3 melt a shot each uh, and when this shot hits on twos rear on ones from your captain uh, wounds on threes rear on ones if you have alerts it's very reliable problem is that you need to keep them safe because everyone will be shooting them at them and they will die very quickly if you don't be don't are not careful with them also venetari are good when are basically your jump pack custodies and yes it sounds cool it, it is cool problem is that they have three plus save instead of two plus for some strange reason and uh, that makes them slightly worse than you would probably want and obviously they are more expensive because of the jump pack but i definitely recommend to look into using them on your list because with the correct build they are good as for the HQs, you must take the Tragic tra Valoris. I will talk about him slightly later in the video, but believe me, he's simply the best. Uh, then, depending on your real estate in the list, you can have options of Shield Captains on the bike, uh, on Jet Bike, Alaris, or Guardian. Again, we'll talk about the builds particularly in the synergy section. Biker is probably the best, uh, but he costs more than all others. And Alaris is the second place because for extra 10 points compared to a Guardian one, you get extra wound, deep strike, more shooting and better Captain Commander traits. If you want a Guardian Captain so much, you might as well take Valerian because for extra 25 points, you get a whole bunch of upgrades like a Warlord trait, a Relic and an ability all in once. And I mean a Warlord trait, not like the real Warlord trait, but something that sounds like a world trade that model already has we'll talk about that later blade champion is a melee beast he's your dedicated melee character and obviously with custodies it's great and the best part about him is that his weapon is actually damage three and he, it has one of the profiles which is damage three and that's very good because that's something that the custodies lack a lot if you kid him out properly with traits and relics he can be very hard to kill and very deadly in combat his combat ability is more or less uh, staying on this level there are not many traits you can really use on him in the custodies book but his survivability is something you can very much affect and he's also four plus transhuman to hit in combat so you can only hit him on fours or better in combat which helps him a lot when he's fighting against some elite stuff if you're really low on budget you can just go for a knight centura and trajan valoris these this pair will always work because trajan will give you all the rerolls and synergies that you really need and Knight Centura will just fill out the second slot in the battalion that you must fill out. And you can also kit her out with a couple of relics and traits and make her very helpful in the game. So, special characters. First of all, Rage of Alors, I already said he's an absolutely incredible unit. Very resilient with 8 wounds, fill up, 5 up, fill no pain, uh, 4 up and 1, 2 plus safe, toughness 5 as all the custodies are. He rerolls all his hit rolls, so both melee and shooting, and his uh, axe is slightly better. It's strength 5, not strength 4. AP 1, damage 2, one shot or two shots in rapid fire. He has 16-inch heroic interventions. He regains your command points when you spend them on 5 pluses. These are his two warlord traits he gets. He can swap martial cutters for you once per game, so he gives you extra flexibility on that. He has 6 attacks, strength 10, AP 3, damage 3, and misericordia. He has a 16-inch horror of reroll once to hit and the wound for your core units once per game he can do one of these things he can reduce damage of an attack to zero so if he accidentally gets hit by a, a rail gun uh, you can just say that it didn't happen actually uh, you can interrupt combat for free with him again very helpful with such a potent guy or you can fight twice with him so 12 attacks in one fight phase again just beastly he can give you uh he gives you one command point if he's your warlord and he must be a warlord so he is like a nice guy paying for his own warlord traits if he was 50 points more he would still be worth it but he is now 200 points so absolutely wonderful model the last time i had such a feeling about someone was in eighth edition when uh back in voldus in the grain ads book was around and he was just in, just amazing because he had six attacks with his uh hammer 
and he hit on twos, re on ones for himself. He gave that aura of re on ones to everyone else. He had three denies, three casts. He knew three powers. So he was like, he did it all. And unfortunately, he's not that good nowadays, but those days were wonderful. And Trajan Loris is the best that you can probably now find in Imperium characters in Ninth Edition. Valerian is buffed up Guardian Captain, as we already said. Main stat line is the same, but he also gets permanent transhuman. His spear is AP4, not AP3, and he ignores any feel no pain or other ignore wounds rules, like Abaddon's only get three wounds at a phase. He'll ignore that. Plus, he can reroll, hit roll, wound roll, saving throw, or charge roll once per battle round. Very helpful and definitely worth 130 points they're asking for him. Alia, I'll just say it up front, don't bother taking her because you're better off taking just simple uh, for 55 points, simple Knight Centura because her buffs are not really that important for you. She has like strength, strength 6 sword instead of strength 5. He f she fights first and can strike on death. All these things are mostly irrelevant with the level output she has, which is not that much. 5 attacks with damage 2 is not nothing to write home about nowadays. So I wouldn't bother and I would just probably take the regular Knight Centura, which also allows you to take those relics and traits, which are very good with Sisters of Silence in the the Custodius Codex. So the secondaries. The Custodius secondaries aren't bad and aren't very great. They are like down the road. Probably need a bump, slight bump uh, from the Games Workshop. So Purge the Enemy, Orc Mortalis. So that's what you take against your, instead of your Assassinate or Bring It Down. Uh, you basically get five points. You, you must uh, find which model is the most expensive in your opponent's army or is a Primarch or is a Supreme Commander. And if you kill that model during the game, you get five points. If you kill it in melee, extra five points. And if you have killed it in melee or and killed in general, you get extra five points if that enemy unit was not in your deployment zone when it was destroyed. So not that difficult, probably, uh, especially against some armies, but you will have to be careful and probably don't select that if you are not really sure that you will be able to bring down that particular unit. Oldfield Supremacy, that one is very good. So it's like our good old Stranglehold. It's at the end of the battle round, you can score three victory points if you control more objective markers not within each player's deployment zone than your opponent does. So if it's like three objective markers in no man's land, you just need to control two of those and you will get your three victory points. And that's a very good secondary to have if you're going second. There's nothing better in the Battle of the Supremacy category, I can tell you that. So probably if you are thinking of taking something in that category, Stand Vigil will be the best choice. No Mercy, No Respite, and Might of Terra. At the end of the battle round, score 4 if you one or more enemy units were destroyed this battle round, and no Adeptus Custodius units from your army were destroyed this battle round. That's a tough one. I'm not sure that I would take this one if I were you. Uh, in most cases, you are much safer taking something like No prisoners against armies that are good for that or taking a secondary from some other category so i would not really trust this one because it's too easy to counter unless you are being very careful about your play and strategy so uh for example shock tactics space marine book you get four points for just flipping an objective so it was your opponent's now it's yours at the end of your turn not the battle round you get those points, which is much easier to do. So synergies, my favorite section of each of these videos, that's where the army comes together. And firstly, we'll talk about the shield companies because I haven't touched on those. These are basically your space marine chapters, uh, but custodies are different, so they are called shield companies. Emperor's Chosen is one you very often will see. You get one reroll to hit or to wound per phase. It allows you to have extra reliability and especially good on your small MSU squads, which is what custodies run usually. Uh, also, 4-up Film of Pain against Mortal Wounds, a very good level of protection against any, anything psychic or anything Mortal Wound, which is something that Custodies are very much sub subject or susceptible to. Plus, uh, one new stratagem to get other Shield Companies benefits for a turn. So, for example, the you can select Shadow Keepers and you will get their buff instead of the 
uh, Emperor's Chosen buff. Shadow Keepers are your defensive host, so they subtract one from attacks when you fight them. Just imagine uh, charging them with 10 Terminators, you have 30 attacks, and now suddenly you have 10 less attacks to worry about. Uh, or the Custodius player has 10 less attacks to worry about. That's substantial, I can tell you that. That's a very powerful ability. I have fought against Shadow Keepers, and I remember it was a very difficult game because of that I, for my Marines. You also get rerolls, full rerolls to wound against characters. And that's, even though it will not come up every game, it's very powerful, especially if a character in question is something like a knight or, for example, uh, a demon primark or whatever. Something that it's not small, so you will be able to target that uh, unit quite a bit. So you will be getting a lot from that buff. Uh, you get also one command voice threat for minus one strength on the attack and that's very good because it works on your bikes as well unlike most of other stratagems that stratagems that you have nowadays in custodius book so just imagine being shot at with strength six weapons and now you suddenly are strength five uh, with those shots and it's going from four ups to five ups to wounds so it's a very big jump or your strength four weapons going down or attacks going down to strength three so wounding on sixes instead of fives against the same toughness six bikers for example and bikes have five wounds each so yeah they are quite they will be quite hard to bring down with the attacks on the wounded on sixes like from Jinster or say and they also get the only fight last debuff relic in the book so it's a relic that allows you to select one unit with an engagement range and that unit fights last an awesome relic and absolute auto take if you're playing shadow keepers and then emissary imperados so these three hosts the emperor emperor's chosen shadow keepers and emissary imperados these are my favorites there are others but these guys are what these are types these shield hosts it's what i would choose if i were playing this so emissary uh, basically ignore any to hit wound modifiers very strong already and always fight first so you don't have to spend command points to interrupt you will be automatically interrupting it's a very powerful ability and they also have an awesome two three command point stratagem well which is a pre-game move for your core unit so you can use that on your bikers for example and swing them 14 inches forward before the game and that's very powerful even though it's very cp hungry they also get a world trade to increase the vexillus or a range and uh, by three inches and ignore any move advanced charge modifiers relic these two are probably not that important uh, however I, I would think about the world trade for the vexilla because that will give you more flexibility on the tabletop allowing you to give the buff of dense cover light cover to more units at the same time and the three character combos you must know about the first is the superior creation world trade fire up shrug and radiant mantle which is a world trade for minus one to hit in combat or in ranged attacks in any case on a bike captain uh, to make him a nightmare to shift with nine wounds and fire up shrug minus one to hit will be very hard to do and also you get a uh, 15 points upgrade captain commander great tip of the spear which gives him reroll once to hit and wound on the charge or heroic intervention in melee and you can give him auric aquila's relic bike to uh, reroll charges for him for free and have a one-time 30 inch move with your bike you will not be able to shoot on and charge with him but it will give him so much movement that he'll be in such a great position next turn to wreak havoc on your, on your opponent Next, second character is a Nuisance Alaris Captain. So the same two traits for him I would probably choose unless you're playing a host which has a better one, uh, which well, I'm not sure about that. So basically you take fire up shrug minus one hit on him to make him very hard to kill and he will be almost as hard to kill as a bike captain at this point and you get him an unstoppable destroyer captain commander trade for four inch unrestricted pilings and consolidations it means that you will be able to pilot and consolidate in each and any direction that you want no matter which unit or model is the closest and the best part is the relic praetorian plate it gives him toughness six which is nice but the best part is this teleport heroic intervention and yes it sounds as good as it is on paper so basically you get to make a heroic intervention in your opponent's charge phase but you can do that even from the other side of the board so the only uh 
criteria is that you must have a friendly unit in that combat. But, so you will basically tell boards there to help that unit out. It's so cool. It gives you so much mobility that in other cases you will not get with the Laris Captain. And it's much more reliable than, say, just charging nine inches from Deep Strike. And the third combo is Knights and Troy with an enhanced Void Chain Cloak. So for a in one minus one to hit and minus one to wound, so it makes her extra hard to kill. It'll be very hard to deal with the five wound model with a four up in one, so half of the wounds already don't come through. And it was minus one to hit and minus one to wound. And also, you get a silent judge world trade for her, so it's a three inch aura of no obsec and minus one to combat attrition. That is extremely powerful because it means that even one Adeptus Custodes model with obsec will be able to outscore a 20 man OPSEC unit of, I don't know, whatever, uh, any, any OPSEC unit in the game. Because those guys will lose OPSEC, but your custodian will retain his OPSEC. So uh, with this character, this Knights and Tour nearby, it will be, uh, you, will be your objective any which way. Now let's quickly run through the stratagems. You have a once per game use of one to two command point stratagem Emperor's Auspice. It's uh, one command point for units of one to four models. And if it's five or more models, it's two command points. So basically it's no rerolls against them. So no rerolls damage, no rerolls to wound, no rerolls to hit. And you can only use that once, but for the right moment, for example, when the opponent sends at you a unit of warp talents with Abaddon's rerolls on, on them, so full rerolls to hit and full rerolls to wound, and you just use the stratagem and spoil all the mood for them because it makes them like 30 or 40 times less efficient than, than they were previously. Next is the Tanglefoot Grenade, my favorite probably stratagem in the book. So one command point if you charge within 12 inches of Custodius Infantry. So it doesn't mean that you, it doesn't say that you must charge them. It means that just you need to declare a charge whilst the, you are within 12 inches of a Custodius Infantry unit. For one command point that can make you minus D6 to your charge range, which is just bonkers because just imagine uh, setting up within like 8 inches or within 9 inches of Adeptus Custodius Infantry unit on an objective and then suddenly when you try to charge them it's minus d6 to your charge and the custodius player rolls like a four and now you cannot charge them even if you roll like a 12. so yeah uh just imagine that it'll be a very very bad day for anyone who's not on the custodian side. Next is the one uh, command point fraternity of heroes. It's a six inch heroic intervention for anyone who already could heroic intervene. So your regular characters, not uh, Valeris. And a three inch heroic intervention for anyone else. Uh, very important, I have a lot of situations where I run, for example, my Death Watch Dreadnought list and I very, very much lack the ability to spend a command point and heroic intervene with that Dreadnought, uh, any Dreadnought in this case. And that's what custodies can actually do. One command point maneuver and fire, fall back and shoot on bikes. One command point presidium shield wall, it's a minus one hit in melee for shield only units of custodian guard. Can be very powerful in some situations, especially considering that it's one command point no matter how big the unit is. And you can get the custodian guard up to 10 models, like wardens, you can also get them up to 10 models. And one, two command point stratagem to plus one to wound and fight in higher toughness. Again, very important, especially if you charge like Galatus, which is strength seven into a toughness eight tank. That's where you would definitely want to spend that one command point because it will only cost you a command point and you will be wounding that tank on fours instead of fives. One, two command point stratagem arcane genetic alchemy, which is basically a transhuman. It only works on your infantry, you cannot work on bikes, unfortunately, now. And two command points, character fights on death. Now relics, I don't want to linger on this too much because most of the good relics I've already mentioned, but these are some of the, the relics that you might want to take in some cases. So Castellan's Mark is redeploy two units or put them into strategic reserves for free. Very important to have tactical flexibility. So if you have the real estate to have one more relic, I would definitely take this one. Eagle's Eye is a good defensive relic, especially in your blade champion, especially if you have superior creation because you get an extra wound and always the more wounds you have, the more chances you have to roll that five up shrug and a three plus invulnerable save once per game for the phase and money mortis is a extremely good 
cast on X Relic, but it only is locked to Dread Host. That's the problem. So you get damage three AP three uh, cast on X. Wonderful stories like damage three, but the problem is that you will probably not be playing Dread Host unless you, that's your favorite shield host. Presidius is the Echo on Shield or a specific relic of minus one to wound. It's, it's a minus one to wound shield for his Guardian Captain. A very good if you want to build an untouchable captain. And uh, very funnily, but Equal and Shield are the best for that because they also get a trait to half damage against the character. So if you combine this shield with the Fire Up Shrug with the half damage, you'll probably get something that is not going anywhere anytime soon. Gatekeeper, Otto Hayden, Strength 5, AP2, Spear. Never take this if you really uh, are planning to win games, but take this if you're playing a casual game. Veil Blade, the same, AP4 Sword with extra two attacks, and Fulminaris Aggressor, not that great. It's a Vagzios only relic, basically a six inch order of ignoring light and heavy cover. Have you ever encountered heavy cover in games? I have not myself, so not very important. Light cover, well, more uh, often, but I, I wouldn't probably spend uh, command points on that. So here we finally come to the roster example. I've chosen Emperor's Chosen for this uh, particular roster because I have a lot of MSU units which will definitely benefit from that sweet reroll one to wound or to hit. And we have Knights and Tour, Trajan Valoris, uh, three units of troops, two of them are Castilian Guards, uh, one with all shields, one with two spears and shield, and a unit of Prosecutors. In the Elite slot, I have Alaris Custodian, one Alaris Custodian, which is probably the best way to run them because you get a lot of flexibility and you don't invest a lot of points. And if you put an Alaris Custodian on the faraway objective, the opponent will need to invest a lot of points to get that model away way from there. Uh, three Venerable Contempt of Dreadnoughts with multi melters. we already discussed those. Vagzos Praetor with the Vagzos Magnifica, uh, that's the Dance Cover one, and three units of three Vertus Praetors with the Salvo Launcher, so the multi melter Missile, the D3 plus three AP4 Missiles. So, and that all comes down to four command points and 2,000 points on the nose. So that was probably my longest how to play guide uh, out of all the ones I filmed before. Uh, if you don't like this format, let me know because I can probably make a very short version. You will not get as many details and as a comprehensive understanding of the army as in this case, but you will get the gist of what you need to, which direction you need to follow for the um, army building purposes. I will definitely make also an Adeptus Custodius what to buy guides because that's something I'm currently thinking of doing myself. So I will meet you guys next time for another Adeptus Custodius episode soon and let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.